Problem solving with quadratics can be tricky, but if you are comfortable with the properties of quadratics at a basic uh, definition level, then interpreting them in questions won't be too impossible. So um, make sure that you remember how to use the properties and how to find them, but I will cover it throughout this question. So this is a typical kind of problem solving question where the quadratic formula is already given. So um, what's you can pause the video, read the question if you want to. So what I want you to mainly do in the beginning is identify what is your input, what is their output. This, is, this will help you answer questions that talk about interpretation, like part B and C. So your input in this question is, the, is an x and it represents the horizontal distance. And your output is the y. So sometimes they use different letters. Uh, so for example, it's not actually a y in this question. The question is h. Um, and then this is the height of the football, so the height of the football. So what it actually is, someone is shooting a soccer ball here and it's going all the way there and the x represents this horizontal distance and the y represents the vertical distance it travels or the height that it travels. So you can easily trace the path as a quadratic equation and that's what we've done here. So um, nothing too impossible. If you throw a football, it's, the path it's going to follow will be a quadratic path. And for this particular one, this is the quadratic function it fits. So from the path, we can identify different properties. So the first question is to plot this and sketch it on um, a paper. And you need to show the coordinates of the vertex and the axis intercept. So um, I'm here, I, I've graphed it. Let's say that it's the window is at standard. So I would recommend always going to standard. So that's zoom and then six. And then as you can see, the graph kind of extends further. I can go to second table and see what type of values I'm getting. I can see that my Y value is quite small, uh, even as my X gets really big. So I'm just gonna change my window and see if I can just change my X. And I, when I do that, it's, I can see the curve happening, but it doesn't, I don't see the end of the curve. So let me increase it again. And there I can see the curve going up and going down. So then I need to sketch it in. I can see that it's a concave down. I need the vertex and the axis intercept. So I will keep on referring to this table. So this is a summary of everything um, that you'll need in terms of the properties. This is how you're gonna find it using the calculator. So some of them have different methods. So the vertex, you'd have three different methods. This is the final answer format. And this is the interpretation for the question. This is the vertex and the uh, axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry as well. So for the vertex, we can go to second trace and find the maximum or minimum. So I can go second trace. I can see that mine is a maximum. So I go to maximum. I'll pick the left bound. I'll go and pick the right bound. This is explained more thoroughly in another video. And I'm going to get 25.99, which is about 26. So you can go for 26,5. So I have the, um, you can see my curve going this way and I need to identify this as 26 point 26 comma 5 um, you can check the vertex in another way maybe you want to find the axes first and that will help you find the vertex in a more accurate way um, so let's find the x-intercept you can find them using left bound and right bound, and that is done in uh, the initial video for properties, so do watch that if you want to. I'm going to show you another method where you're going to go to apps, and you're going to scroll all the way down until you get to poly simultaneous 2. You're going to click on that. You're going to select the first option, which is a polynomial root finder. You're going to then make sure that your order is set to 2, so it's not to 1 or or to three or to five, it's make sure you're set to two because you're, we're dealing with quadratics, it's to the power of two. Make sure this is real, decimal, normal, float, and it's on radian, that doesn't matter. Now in order to press next, you can't actually go to next, you have to press on the graph. And it's gonna be obvious why, because the next button is right above the graph button in your the calculator. So um, you press on 
uh, graph and then you put in the uh, quadratic that you have. So for this question, you need to make sure that you put in the correct order. So you have the coefficients of x squared. So this is going to be negative 0 0.0125 and negative 0.0125. And then I'll go to my next value. That's going to be a positive 0 0.65. So I'm just going to change the sign to a positive 0 0.65 and then Go again and the last value is negative 3.45 negative 3.45 once you have all of these you need to solve it and again the way to access the solve button is to press on graph so you're gonna press on graph and it's actually gonna give you when you press on graph you're actually solving it and it's gonna give you the roots so it's gonna give you the six and the 46. So if I go here, this is going to be 6, and this is 46. But remember, you need to write them as coordinates. So this is 6, 0, and this is 46, 0, because they are x-intercepts. When you're doing x-intercepts, the y value is 0. So this is the second option I chose. This is how the final answer is going to look like. And then finally, the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, you either go to second, trace, and enter the value x equals to 0, or go to the table and look at the y when x equals to 0. So I'm going to go to second table. Sorry, we have to quit this. So I'm just going to quit. Second table, and I'm just going to see when my x is equal to 0, what happens to my y. My y is negative 3.45. So y is a negative... 3.45 or if you know the perimeters it should be equal to the c value so once we have all of these we've grafted we've sketched it that's all good now how do we interpret these values so part b asks you to interpret with reference to the x-intercept so remember this is the distance that it travels so from the this is the input so the this is the input and this is the output and we said that the input is the horizontal distance and the output is the height um, so you'd notice that the output from the 6 to the 46 is a positive output. It means that this is a positive height. You can't have a negative height, can you? This is a negative output. So this is where um, the output, the y value, is positive. So between 6 and 46, so you can say between 6 and 46, um, we get the, um, the, the height, um, the, or we could say the football is up in the air, in the air, or it has a horizontal distance, or the, the ball travels from 6 meters to 46 meters um, horizontally, um, uh, that's when it that's when it reaches a vertical height the horizontal the that's when it gains a height so let's just look here so the x intercept your output is between the two x values so it's like a lower bound and an upper bound so the height of the football uh, it starts from a six meter to 46 meter horizontal so it's just basically using the input and output that I that we wrote in the beginning so between 6 meters and 4 meters, the football is up in the air, or the football has a height. Um, so it has an output. Because everything else here is a negative value, everything in the yellow is a positive value. So if I pick any other coordinate here, it will be something, and the y, the output, will be a positive number. So it, there is a height happening here. Otherwise, here it's going to be a negative height, which doesn't make sense. Now, for the last one, find the equation for the axis of symmetry and state what this tells you of the context of the problem. So the axis of symmetry uh, can, is the same as taking the x coordinates of the vertex. So if the vertex is x, y, the axis of symmetry is you taking the x value or using x1 plus x2 divided by 2, any option. So I can go uh, 6 plus 46 divided by 2 and that should give me 26, or I could just take this 26 from the vertex. But remember, your final answer has to be x equals to 26, and that is my axis of symmetry here. Okay. 
Now, what happens with the axis of symmetry and the graph itself? Notice that they intersect exactly at the vertex, which is the maximum point. So in terms of how do you interpret it? So for this x value, so we found that it's, um, that it's uh, precisely 26. For this x value, your y is at the minimum or the maximum. So let's interpret it with our question. So at, we can say that at uh, horizontal, so remember we're translating the input and out, at the horizontal distance um, 26 meters, the football reaches a maximum a maximum height. Sometimes it's a minimum, but it's it's a um, maximum for this question. So notice that I interpreted this is my input and this is my output. So at this input, my output is at a uh, maximum. So that's how you interpret the question. So hopefully this was helpful. You have to make sure that you go back to the main properties of quadratics, um, but do pause and read through this uh, set of um, explanation because it shows you how to how to find these and how to interpret them within the context of the problem.